Hello everyone. I just wanted to put together a quick video on um, a question that came up in the group on the best way to do graphics on either side of a chapter title. So I'm going to show you how, how to best handle that. I'm just going to drop in some placeholder text just so we can uh, pretend this is a job. All right, so I'm going to set the title to be chapter title. Um, all right, so Rick, let me pull this up so we can make sure we answer his question properly. Um, so Rick brought up a question that he was um, interested in setting, like his chapter title, something like this, and um, what was the best way to add, add these types of graphics. Um, and then be able to change it later down the road. So I'm going to give you a couple of options on how to do this, and then I'm going to give you the best options so that if you did want to change it down the road, you could. Um, so hopefully this will all make sense. I am in the middle of moving right now, so I am all, <laughs> all over the place. So I'm sorry if this is a bit scattered, but you're probably used to that by now. All right, so the first thing we can do is that there are a lot of fonts that have glyphs, and we've talked about these before. So you can actually use a bunch of glyphs as these kind of separators. All right, so here are some glyphs for Adobe Garamond. Let's make these a little bigger so we can see them. Now, you will notice that we have this glyph and this glyph, and you're like, well, that's nice and all, but they're going the same way. All right, so let's say you wanted to use this, and but you wanted them to uh, have both of the kind of little flower part facing outward. So this one we would want to change. All right, so with glyphs, what I recommend, um, and this is mainly for being able to use these as ebooks as well, is to select the graphic, go to type and go to create outlines, okay? And what that does is it turns that glyph into a vector, an EPS basically. So it, it's a mathematical graphic, all right? Which is gonna be your best bet because they are the type of graphics that are going to be, um, that are going to print a lot crisper than like a JPEG or a PNG, which are all raster based. So um, anytime we outline anything, InDesign is going to convert it into, into that type of graphic. All right, so now what we can do is we can actually flip it so it is the mirror image, all right? So if you find a graphic that you want to use, but see, I'm going I'm to flip it again. I'm, I'm actually going to flip vertical. So this part and this part are both at the top, all right? So now what we can do is we can select this one, we're gonna create that one as an outline, and there we go, all right? So that's how you can use glyphs, and the great thing is is that now that we've turned these into images, they will come in um, as images in our ebook, and we don't have to do anything special with them. Now, in this case, because um, they're just inline images, we would need to, and, we, and if we ever wanted to update them, we might come into trouble because then we would have to go to every single one and replace it with something different. All right, so that would be the negative aspect of doing it this way. But if you did do it this way, um, what I would do in these situations is I would just copy this. Hold on, let, let's, let's go back a little bit. I'm just going to do a chapter two, um, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. All right, this is just for, um, for purposes of giving you a little bit more in depth. Stuff. So I'm going to actually make these be keep options on the next page. All right, 
So now we have these headers at the top of all our of, of each beginning chapter. All right. So now if you decided that this is how you wanted your chapters to look like, this is what we can do. And let's say you already had your chapters done. This is what we can do to uh, copy this image for these throughout the book. Hope that makes sense. Does in my head. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is you need to make sure that these are all chapter titles. And what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can copy this entire line. You just do a control C. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our find change menu. We're actually going to do a grep search. We want to find chapter title and we want to find what chapter and then that number. And if you already have multiple chapters that are, uh, you know, you may go up to 30 or something, you'll need to repeat it one or more times. Um, and then it's probably best to put your end of paragraph and then let's go back in and recopy this and do a copy. All right. So this is the cool thing about InDesign when you use searches is that it will let you put in what is in your clipboard. So we saved that chapter one. All right. And we're just going to tell it to place what's in our clipboard. We're going to do a change all and it did not find it. So now we have to figure out why. Change all. Let's just do this. Oh, of course. Why aren't you finding it? Chapter. Did I spell something wrong? All right, let's do chapter. Next. All right, maybe I had something selected. Oh, okay, sorry. It's always when you are trying to give somebody an example that something happens. All right, so we're going to do a find next. All right, now we're going to do a change all because it found it. All right, so what that did is it went through all our chapter titles and replaced it with that graphic. But you will notice. Oh, now they all say chapter one, so now I'm going to have to renumber them all. Well, that's kind of a pain. So let's go back to this and think about it, how we can do it in a grep search. All right. So what we can do is we're going to do this in two parts. What we can do is say find what chapter and we're going to put the digit in parentheses and we also need to add that little plus sign if we do have more than chapters that go up to higher that higher than 10 and above all right i'm not going to do it for this for this because we don't need it now we're going to leave off that um end of paragraph all right and for here i am just going to copy the first part all right of this and I'm going to leave our little C here because that means the clipboard. And we just have this first part in our clipboard. And we're going to say chapter. And then we are going to tell it to put in found one. All right. So what found one means is that anything is that's in these parentheses, I want you to put here. So it's going to put that digit. So let's see if this works. Change. And then go ahead and, yep, that looks right, do a change all. And that's only because it only doubled this um, for that reason. So we'll take that out. But all the other ones are proper. Looks like we have two spaces here, but that's okay. All right, so now you're thinking, well, how do I get this last part in? So you can do the same thing, except copy your clipboard at the end. All right, so now we're going to do a change all, and it got it in. So we might have to clean up some of the spaces, but if you've already assigned all your chapter titles, um, 
we could actually do a search for three spaces and change it to two or change it to an M space or however we want. But that will save you time because all you have to do is use that clipboard feature to input that graphic throughout. All right. Now, let's say you want a graphic that you want to be able to change. So I'm going to undo all of this. All right. So we don't want this. We actually want some kind of, um, we'll go to my collection of graphics and we will look. So let's say this is a, uh, let's say this is a Christmas book, all right? And we maybe want some sort of ornament. Um, all right, let's use these candy canes, all right? These will be cute. We um, get to it. So we're going to copy this. I'm just going to place it in a new file. This is Adobe Illustrator. And we're going to save it as, I'm just going to save it as my desktop right now, Candy Cane, and it's facing to the right. So that's going to be the right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip it. And then I'm going to save it candy cane left. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we are going to input to do this. Hold on just a second. InDesign is um, going a little slow. What I did is I'm at the beginning of the chapter and we're going to do a control D for place. And I'm going to place that candy cane left graphic that I made. And then I'm going to size it down. So when I size things like this, I like to use my number dials up here. Make sure you keep the constraining proportions linked. And we can probably just go to a height of about 0.25 and resize it. All right. And I would probably put a space, uh, let's say, probably an end space to separate. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. And then we're going to come in and put with a place, control D, control D, and we're going to put that candy cane right. And you are going to resize it. Now, we could have also placed the candy cane left and just flipped it within InDesign. You can do that as well. Um, that's no problem. There's many different ways you can do it. And so there you go. And then if you already had all your chapters set, you could do the same thing where you copied this and then went through. Um, let's try to do the whole thing. Nope, that's not going to work. Um, probably. I would just copy this whole thing and replace them all and then go manually one by one updating the numbers. But if you have a lot of numbers, that may not be uh, the best use of time. So then you could do the double copy, um, the double find and replace uh, like, like we did before. Now, the thing about using graphics is that all the graphics are now, all of these uh, little icons are linked to an actual file. So I'm just going to um, cheat a little bit just for time. I'm just going to copy this here so I can show you what happens. All right, so let's say you decided I don't want to do candy canes. Instead, let's do... Um, what will look cute? Let's let's try this little. This is a cute little boot. And again, sometimes when you get these graphic collections, it's kind of hard to maneuver. So I'm going to group this, then I'm going to copy this, and I am going to place it and call this boot left, and then we're going to flip it. Reflect, and I'm going to call it boot right. 
Again, we could use boot left again and just flip it in InDesign if you want. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the InDesign file. And instead of going in and selecting this, what we're going to do is we're just going to go to our links panel. All right. Um, you should definitely have a links panel set up on your workspace. If you haven't, be sure to add it. If you go to Windows, Links, um, that's the menu you would need. And what Links does is it shows us everything that is placed within our document. So any graphics, any images. If you have a Word document that's linked instead, um, which you can do, it's a nightmare. Maybe one day I'll tell you a little bit more about it, but I don't recommend doing that. Um, it would be listed here as well. So now what we can do is, you remember all of these are candy canes, we can say, well, you know what? I want you to replace all of these instances of the candy cane with the boot, all right? And so if you look, it says candy cane left is in the document five times, just like candy cane right is in the document five times. So what I'm going to do is just uh, on the, the top level of the candy cane left, I'm going to say replace it with the boot left. All right, look what it did. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing. Candy cane boot right, replace it. And there we go. But if we look at it, we realize that half the boot is missing. Why is that? Well, we, did, we don't have the right settings in our graphics, um, graphics uh, container. All right. So to correct this, when you place graphics, the best thing is to set some information within the container. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a display style. Hold on just a second. Let me reset my, we're going to, I'm sorry, not a display style, but an object style. All right. So we're going to come here and say object style, new object style. We're going to say graphic. And this, this object style works just like your paragraph styles and your character styles. It gives you certain settings for any text frames, any for any graphical frames, whatever, and gives you a bunch of different options that you can change to a to a box within InDesign um, in a second. All right. So what we're going to do is um, tell it to fit content proportionally. Or is it still frame proportionally? I think it's still frame proportionally is what we want. All right. So I'm going to click on OK. And we are going to assign that box to these graphic boxes. All right. And we're going to copy this on top of these. Or we could go through and assign these little candy canes here with that graphic style. Now let's watch what happens when we replace the candy cane left, hopefully, in theory. All right, so we're going to go boot left. And of course, it didn't work. So we're going to figure this out and boot right. All right, see if it clears overrides. All right, so that isn't quite what we want. So we are going to look at these settings again. Fill frame, auto fit. That's what we wanted. I'm sorry, auto fit. All right. So now we um, clear overrides. We'll figure it out in a minute. Edit graphic, frame fitting options. Fill frame proportionally. Fit content. Let's go back to fit content proportionally. And the truth is, we don't need any of these other things. Um, so I'm just going to decheck these and fit frame. Fit frame fitting options. Auto fit fit content proportionally. All right, and then we're going to clear override. All right, so there we go. That's how you do it. All right, so. 
let's reverse and redo this, all right? So I'm going to undo everything. Oh, that's not working. I'm going to pretend that we haven't done any of this. We're going to redo this again. Let's go back to a candy cane. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to set this all as the graphic. I got to redo this because I undid everything. And we uh, are going to auto fit and we're going to fit content proportionally. And then we're going to click on OK. And we are going to assign that object style to both of these um, graphic containers. So we're going to copy, place, I'm just going to place over. All right, and then what we're going to do, all right, so now we have candy canes in here. Maybe you're doing a book two that you want to use the boot, or your client says, I don't want candy canes, I want the boot. So what we're going to do is go to the links panel. We're going to select candy cane left, the top level now. If you select one of these individual ones, it's only going to change it on that page. So we want the top level candy cane. Um, and we're going to do boot left. And then we are going to do uh, replace the right with boot right. So boot right. All right, there we go. And you'll see they are now, let's go ahead and view at high quality. They are now perfectly placed, perfectly sized, and fit perfectly. All right, so that is the best way to create those graphics that fit on either side of a chapter like that, to use images so you can easily replace them in the future. Make sure you create an object style for that graphic holder. And the only thing that object style needs to do is frame fitting options, auto fit, fit content proportionally. So now, anytime you want to change that graphic, you just need to go and change it in the links panel. All right, so let's do this again. This time, we're going to use a glyph, all right? So I'm going to just come in here and type a glyph and create a glyph. All right. So let me go to my glyphs panel. Um, type glyphs. I'm back in Illustrator now. And I actually want to use an Adobe wood type ornament. And this is a pretty cool font that has some really cool graphics. And you will notice a lot of the little ornaments have a left and right version, all right? So here's a left version, and here's a right version of the same graphic, all right? So we are going to use this, all right? This is going, and then I'm going to create outlines. I'm going to turn it to outlines so it turns it into a graphic. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to save it, and this is going to be glyph left. And then I can go in and put the right version, but really all I need to do is reflect it. And then I'm going to save this as glyph right. All right. And then we will go back into our InDesign document. I'm going to go to the first level of both of these. For boot left, we're going to replace it with glyph left. And then for boot right, we're going to replace it with glyph right. All right. So now, easy peasy, it's changed throughout, and you don't have to worry about it. Now, another thing is, is that we could have easily used this glyph directly from InDesign, and we didn't have to create files for it. But then it's not as easy to replace. So Adobe Wood Type Ornaments, here is the glyph right, and Adobe Wood Type Ornaments, here is the glyph left. So that is the same thing, but these are fonts, whereas this right here is a graphic. All right, hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. 
and I hope everyone is having a great day and staying self safe and healthy.